I know how to get rid of you. I'm going to throw you in there with the wolves. And he's going to he's going to get eaten up and get thrown out of there on, on his on his head, right? So I said, oh, come on, let's go. I introduced him to my assistant. They brought him in, and I figured he ain't gonna last about 10, 15 minutes, if that. Welcome to Miami. Like whatever comes to my mind at that moment. Awesome, Michael, can you introduce yourself? Ah. Good morning, everybody. My name is Mike Williams. I am uh, currently the Dean of the My Life on Power Preparatory Academy, currently located in Liberty City, Florida. Uh, my journey to this position is long, but I'll abbreviate it for you. I'm from New York, worked in the state system for about 20 years. I uh, relocated to Florida some time ago and started in the Florida system. Um, working in the juvenile justice system, uh, each position I've gotten um, felt like the people above me did not know what they were doing. So my idea was to get to that position and then make some changes. So I'd get promoted and get to a position I found out that Hmm. Whatever position I was in, there was always somebody that was dictating what we do, and they didn't know what they were doing. So then I would move up to another level, and I found out um, I was about one level below the governor, one or two steps below the governor, and I found out that there was always going to be somebody above me that's telling me what to do, they have no clue what they're talking about. Right? So there had to be some kind of changes going on, and I, I didn't have the power to make those kind of changes. Moved to Florida, started out in their, their system, found out that pretty quickly that they had the same problem, right? I was an assistant, my, my, my superintendent didn't know what they were doing, so I became a superintendent, found out that the regional didn't know what they were doing, so I started working in the regional office. After a while, I just gave up. I left, and I came back to Florida. Only thing different this time, reorganized. I, 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 I just changed. I left the country, and I came back uh, after about five years, and um, started working for a private uh, age, agency, and that was a, probably the, the, the best thing that happened and the worst thing because I found out that the private industry is all uh, driven by profit motive. And so when you're dealing with kids, what happens is if your profit motive, if, you're, if your objective is to make a profit, then your objective is not to take care of the kids anymore. Your objective is to make money. So it's very, it's very weird thing coming from the state to start working in the, in the private industry. So while I was working in the, um, uh, one of the residential facilities, <clears throat> a superintendent there, and Daniel walked in. We have um, programs, uh, people provide programs all the time, and there are people that usually pop in and say, we have some great programs for you. And it's a lot of, a lot of hype, a lot of talk, and they really don't deliver. So he walks in, out of the blue one day, um, blonde hair, blue eyes, and you know, looking like he came out of GQ magazine. He was like tough, you know? I uh, had a group with him. And so he says, hey, I want to do something with your kids. And I looked at him. <laughs> a bit skeptical. <laughs> a bit skeptical. I'm like, what is this guy? He, he doesn't look like the kind of clientele that I deal with, so what can he do for us? So, I try to get rid of him, really. I mean, you know, and he, he just kept talking. He's your DJ Jacob. DJ Jacob, right. Okay. And he just kept talking and talking. And da, 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 da. You've come back from Europe. <laughs> so he came, he came in and he was just talking, talking about blah, da, da, da. And I tried to get rid of him, but he was very persistent. And, um, you know, I tried one way, and I said, well, I don't really have the time right now. Da, da, da. He said, yeah, but da, da, da. And he kept talking. I said, all right, I know how to get rid of you. I'm going to throw you in there with the wolves. And he's going he's gonna to get eaten up and get thrown out of there on his, on his head, right? So mm -hmm. I said, oh, come on, let's go. I introduced him to my assistant, and they brought him in. And I figured he ain't going to last about 10, 15 minutes, if that. So I went back to my office, started working. Um, came back out a little bit later on to see what was going on. And, he had my guys. My guys are like uh, tough. They're like, they're really they're <laughs> challenging. I use the word challenging. <laughs> okay? All the time there's something going on. So when I walked in, they were sitting around something like this in a semicircle. And he was in the middle of it. And he was saying something. I don't know what he was saying, but he was doing some, some kind of uh, thing with them. But they were sitting there listening. They were quiet. They were quiet, seated, listening. They don't normally, I mean, on a good day, to have them all seated and, you know, right? 
even, even in the lunch, they don't sit quietly. So something was going on. I didn't really understand what it was, but something was going on. So he survived the first day. He says, can I come back? I said, yeah, sure, why not? So the first day was successful. So he came back. And he came back again. And again, he started doing something that no other, no other group uh, that, have had, that have come in there had, had ever done. He was consistent. He kept coming back. Even when I was like, okay, you're getting too much now. He just kept coming back and coming back. And I started seeing some results from the kids. I started seeing results. You know, I, I talked to them and, you know, and, uh, and um, try to find out what, are they, what is it that they're getting from this guy. And they started running around a litany of things and started using words that, that not normally come out of their mouths. The language of my guys are, you know, based on like four letters. You know, most of the words are four letters. You know, some of those words, right? Four letter words. So they started using multi-syllabic words that I've never heard them say before. Okay. Like career and fundamentals and 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 and, 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 and talking about putting the life on track when they leave, when they leave, what they're gonna do, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I got interested in this in this thing that they were doing. I started asking questions about what, what it is. Started hearing words like um, EQ and emotional intelligence and things like that. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> what is that? Whatever it is, it's working. So I uh, became intrigued and um, talked to Daniel about it. And he brought me to a, he invited me to a class at uh, Nova. And uh, went in and sat down. They were doing like the little happy dance. That you all doing this now? Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting in the back. <laughs> this. How am full of He said, Mike, come on in, come on in. I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I can't do that. Right? He said, no, 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 just do it. And so from there on, it became, it, it became like a challenge to me. Like, OK, well, everyone seems to be dancing, but I'm sitting in the corner. Why am I sitting in the corner everybody's dancing? Because I don't think, I don't see the value in that. I don't see the value in that. What, what is the point of sitting in a group of strangers and dancing around in the room? So I sat there. And about an hour into the class, I started getting it. I started getting it. Somewhere along, along the lines is, if you're not willing to come out of your comfort zone, to get results, if you're not willing to come out of your comfort zone to 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 get work uh, results, not just for yourself but for the kids that you're working with, then what are we doing? We're limiting ourselves. And I started getting it just from that very first class. I started getting it. And I said, Hmm, this is interesting. This is interesting. By the end of the class, I wanted to dance. I wanted to dance. Why? Because I wanted to get results. So that was that started the relationship that we had, and we continued collaborating um, um, uh, after that point. And I quit my job. I quit my job, and I said, "This is what I want to do. I want to be involved with the the movement because here is something that I, you know, after all these years of working in DJJ with structures and things of that nature, and people telling us what to do and, and how to do it, and when to do it, and I didn't see that any of that was working." My goal is to change lives, to be, make, have an impact with people. And if all I do is just open the door, lock somebody up for a period of time, when the judge says release them, get them in the street, and then take another one, sit in, it's like, you do that over and over again, it's like, what am I doing? What, what, what real changes am I making? I'm just a jailer. I want to do more than just jail kids. I want to have impact, long-term impact. So, came in. Both feet, and that's where I'm at.